have a beautiful day to get back to business. Memorial Stadium, the host venue. The home team ready to defend the Rock, taking the field with victory in mind. Let's do this. It's time to push play for BTN football. Today, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons make their first ever visit to Bloomington, Indiana, where the Hoosiers are looking to finish off a perfect September. A very pleasant welcome to you. Alongside Jay Lehman, I'm Joe Beninati. The Hoosiers come into this contest very well rested off of a bye week. When you take a look at them on film, what are your big takeaways from their two victories? Well, offensively, it's got to be balanced. Sometimes you think spread, you think finesse, you think passing, but Indiana can run the football, they can throw the football, and defensively, the first two games here has been a different story. They're playing with passion, they're playing with technique, they're playing sound, and most importantly, they're getting turnovers that change the complexion of the ball game. When the Hoosiers choose to run the football, they do so behind a battering ram named Divine Redding. Yeah, Divine Redding's everything you want in a back. He's got speed, he's got power, but something you can't necessarily coach is the vision and the patience. You watch him run behind that big Hoosier offensive line, he's gonna look for his hole, take his one cut and get upfield. He always falls forward too. He's a guy that's big and strong. So much fun to watch in the open field. Meanwhile, junior college transfer Richard Lego is getting more and more comfortable with his QB responsibilities. He's done a phenomenal job managing the game. 65% completion percentage, no interception, but he's kind of been bridled a little bit. I'm looking for them to let him go because Indiana cannot win this game just running the ball against a stout defense from Wake Forest. Richard Lego has to make throws with his arm. Last season, when these two teams met in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Hoosiers had their hands full with quarterback Kendall Hinton. They won't have to track him today. Yeah, Kendall Hinton changes the whole complexion of the Wake Forest offense. Last year against Indiana, it was what he did, not only with his feet, but with his arms and two rushing TDs as well. He got banged up last week in the win versus Delaware, won't be playing. So that's going to change how Wake Forest attacks. The Demon Deacons do have complete faith, however, in John Wolford. He's very much battle-tested. Very experienced. John Wolford's a guy that's probably more accurate as a passer than Kendall Hinton. He's going to have to get some explosive plays in the passing game for Wake Forest to move the football. In the moments prior to kickoff, uh, Indiana head coach Kevin Wilson is kind enough to lend us some insight. And coach, yesterday you said your team practiced so well it was almost too good. What did you like about the preparation for today? Well, again, we just still with the open day, we had time to get some guys fresh. We had some really physical practices early just yesterday. We were, we were fast locked in and we'll need to be today. Come off open date, you can have glitches. Wake Forest has been playing good. We're going to need to have a good go. We had a good go today. Coach, what's the key against Wake Forest's stout run defense? How do you move the football? Uh, you got to stay on blocks. Uh, you got to get the ball in the perimeter zone. We got to have some pass mix. Let's go. They're very, very, they've been very, very good. They were very good last year. They've been very, very good. It's going to be a difficult, it's going to be a hard challenge and our defense is going to have to rise up on our end as well, guys. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Good luck today. Thanks. Thank you. That's Kevin Wilson, the head coach for Indiana. Meanwhile, Jay, associate head coach, defensive coordinator Tom Allen, he's been fielding a lot of compliments for the Hoosiers' improvements on D. Absolutely. Tom Allen has brought an energy and a passion, has ignited this defense. They've been getting turnovers all over the field. The first two games, they're plus five in that category, and they've been key turnovers and key points of the game to seal the victories for the Hoosiers. Got a chance to sit down with him yesterday. Love his passion, his fire, and an Indiana native. He feels right at home here with the Hoosiers. Very much so. Mike Weaver, the redshirt junior, will kick off for Wake Forest. He started playing varsity soccer in high school when he was just a seventh grader. Talk about the high, co high school coaches bringing up young players. Seventh grade. <laughs> seventh grade. Ricky Brookins back deep for Indiana. Just a second ever meeting between these two. Indiana held off a furious Wake, for uh, Wake Forest rally a season ago to claim victory. Both of these teams with unblemished records. Wake Forest 3-0, Indiana 2-0, and we are off and running. This one is drilled out of the back of the end zone for the touchback. 
Auto Owners Insurance. The impact players, Jay, now that the Hoosiers have the football, who are you choosing from that offensive squad? Well, we talked about Devine Redding, 122 rush yards a game, leads the Big Ten. He's got all the skills. Mitchell Page, a guy that not a lot of people think about because he's in the slot, but he's a dynamic return guy. He's good possession receiver. And Duke Edgefort loves to play in the offensive backfield. He'll be active today. If you know anything about Indiana football, you know it's all about tempo, pace. They will go, go, go. And Richard Lego, the 22-year-old from Plano, Texas, is the man who's at the controls. The first play from scrimmage is a play-action pass. Lego climbing up in the pocket, complete! He's got his man into Wake Forest territory. This is gonna go the distance. 75 yards, Nick Westbrook again. Said Richard Lego was going to have to throw the football downfield. Kevin Wilson knew that too, and they start right off the bat to Nick Westbrook. The protection here, they leave in the back in the tight end. That gives time for Lego to buy time with his feet and hits Westbrook in stride. And nobody near him just takes it all the way for six points. Amari Henderson was a cornerback running with Westbrook. Westbrook in the last game a couple of weeks ago had a couple of touchdown catches including one that traveled 79 yards on a flanker screen. That one 75 to start the game with a bang as the Griffin Oaks comes on for the extra point and knocks it through. 13 seconds is all it took. And Lego gets more congratulations. Well, we knew Indiana likes to start fast. You look at their previous two games, and they start with a bang here. A little play action right off the bat. Good protection. And Westbrook just pulled away from Henderson, and Henderson left his feet to make the play instead of secure the tackle. Nobody was behind him. Touch, touchdown. Fans having no trouble jumping for joy right off the bat here in Bloomington. As Oaks will kick off end over end, and it soars over Four yards deep for another touchback taken there by Stephen Claude. Auto owners impact insurance players of the game. Demon Deacons get their first touch on offense. Yeah, look at the running back, Matt Colburn. He's a guy that can do a lot of different things, catch the ball, run the ball. Camp Serenay, though, not just a blocking tight end, can catch balls in space and get that yard, those yards after catch. And Marcus Oliver for the Hoosier defense, active defensively. He's a ball hawk. He's looking to get a turnover every time he tackles the runner. Serenay, impressive tight end. You said that. He's been the best friend of Penn State quarterback Trace McSorley since the two of them were nine years old. Playing out of the ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference, the guys in white, the Demon Deacons. Wolford to throw on first and 10. Drops it off and that's deflected. It'll fall incomplete. Looking for Matt Colburn, a 19-year-old sophomore. As we see the numbers for Wolford on the season, he's been splitting time with the injured Kendall Hinton. We saw Hinton on the field for warm-ups, but he's slated to be out two to four weeks with a knee injury. I'm interested how he'll play without Kendall Hinton on his back shoulder. He's the guy. He's going to get all the reps. Zone read to Colburn. Good interior defense. They'll stop him for a gain of one. Marcus Oliver getting the congratulations from his mates. They love the captain, the linebacker number 44. If you're a middle linebacker against an inside run team like Wake Forest, you've got to be able to work your way through traffic. And he worked his way through traffic, used his hands, and made the stop for no gain. This will bring up a third, let's call it five, just past the first minute of play on BTN. Wolford takes the snap. Scrambles out of the pocket. Drives across the 35. Picks up the first down yardage. Give him a gain of seven. And move the chains for Wake Forest. An underrated runners. Wolford, most people think of Kendall Hinton. And he used his feet right there to pick up the first down. Everybody was covered up. Good coverage by Neiman. Nobody had the quarterback. This Wake Forest team, victorious most recently over Delaware. A huge offensive performance, especially on the ground in the last couple of games. Wake Forest has rushed for right around 600 yards. 
Wolford to throw, picking up Matt Colburn out of the backfield. He's into Indiana territory, tracked down by Tony Fields. A gain of 18 on the play for Wake Forest, looking to respond. They were punched in the nose on the first play from scrimmage. It was Lego to Westbrook for 75 yards and the 7 0 advantage. It's a time to get aggressive if you're Wake Forest. Coming off a turnover, you're on the opponent's other side of the 50. Devin Pike, tight end in motion. Sone Reed. Colburn bouncing off the first tackler. Lunging across the 40. Give him four on the carry. Credit Nate Hoff on the tackle. 22-year-old redshirt junior, 74 there in the red. Super strong. Colburn filling in for a 19-year-old freshman, Cade Carney. Carney also out injured with a sprained knee. All he did was have three running touchdowns against Duke and win a, a couple weeks back. Colburn running on second and six, and nothing there. Marcus Oliver and Nate Hoff were around the football. A gain of one. I really like Marcus Oliver. The way he plays with his hands, he was engaged in a blocker, used his hands to create separation, shut the block blocker, and made the play. And this is where Wake Forest and John Wolford have struggled. Third down, can they convert? Wolford fires this one on the money. Complete to the 15-yard line. Wolford's best. Finding Alex Bachman, his first year as a full-time starter. The 20-year-old sophomore from Moore Park, California. And this is where not having Kendall Hinton can hurt you. A mobile quarterback in the red zone really helps your success. More tempo coming here. Wade gets the quick hitter. Chucky Wade bouncing off of tacklers and finally nudged out of bounds. Bringing him to the sideline with Niall Sykes. What can you say but poor tackle? Four or five broken tackles against Hoosier defenders, and Chucky Wade almost got himself a first down. The perfect setup. You're second and short. You get, you get the first down here. You have a fresh set of downs. We leak below four minutes, Jay, in this opening quarter with Indiana on top. Colburn in the backfield with Wolford. He's checking with the sideline. Second and short. Colburn was enveloped as soon as he took that handoff. Greg Peach was all over him. No game there. He loved that little zone read play, but Indiana's not giving the quarterback run much, much, much respect. Why Kendall Hinton's not in? John Wolford not known as a runner. Quarterback sneak here. Powering straight ahead. The offensive line for the Demon Deacons, Haran, Hayworth, Harris, Haynes, and Anderson. Trying to create some space for John Wolford. When we talk about explosive plays. Wake Forest has have to, had to earn it on this drive, right? They've had to get a third and short, a fourth and two. They're using every kind of play they can out of fresh set of downs from the four. Cortez Lewis is the lone wide receiver to the near side of the field. Colburn in the backfield with Wolford. 12th play of the drive. Wolford will keep it and trot into the end zone. Touchdown. Demon Deacons, a four-yard sprint. Well, we talked about how the Indiana defense wasn't respecting John Wolford as a runner. They were just simply crashing down on Colburn. Nobody had the quarterback run, and he waltzed into the end zone. As you'll see, they come off hard. Marcelino Ball hits the tailback, but who's got the quarterback? Looked like T. Gray Scales might have been, but nobody was there to tackle him before he got to the end zone. Wolford had 70 yards rushing and a touchdown last week against Delaware. He's on the board now for Wake Forest today. Garrett Wilson will snap. Dom Maggio to hold. Mike Weaver is on now for the extra point try. Just a shade under three minutes with which to work in this opening quarter. Low snap. Nice job by the holder, Maggio, and Weaver knocks it through. And the return set up the touchdown. We're all tied up in Bloomington. The guys were looking good on the set today in East Lansing. I was watching them getting ready for that Wisconsin-MSU matchup. What a fun show. Spice, the coach Jerry, and, of course, Dave. John Wolford toweling off after a... Lengthy drive and a four-yard scoring run. 
as the Hoosiers will bring it out of their own end zone. Sprint down to about the 23 yard line. Lego has misfired on four of his last five pass attempts. Working out of the pistol here, off the play action. Swings that one on target for Ricky Jones. Jones slips loose from Henderson. Stopped there by the hard charging linebacker, Grant Dawson. Showing off his arm strength right there. Richard Lego from the opposite hash on the deep out route. Just puts it on a rope to Ricky Jones. And they've been picking on number 10, Henderson, all day. A gain of 23 brings the first quarter to an end. We're tied up at seven apiece. Richard Lego has been pleased with the offense to this point. A sun splash day in Bloomington. Beautiful on campus at Indiana. The home team in a slugfest with Wake Forest at Memorial Stadium, where they like it, the redder the better on BTN. Quarter number two begins from the Rock Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. Hoosiers in possession, Lego with familiarity walking down that line of scrimmage, keeping everyone in form. Here comes a blitz, beautifully timed, and down goes Lego. A thud delivered by Jabari Williams, a loss of seven. Talk about perfect timing by Jabari Williams. They need to mix up the cadence because Jabari Williams was right in sync with it. Big hit. Williams, who's coming back from an ankle injury against Tulane. The interior of the Wake Forest line stiffening. And you see solid defensive line play from the Demon Deacons. Josh Banks leads the way. Of course, talk about Duke Edgefor. Willie Yarberry's another guy. They've got a lot of big bodies in there. Makes it tough to run. We were watching film yesterday. You couldn't take your eyes off of 40 in the white, Josh Banks. When you talk about defensive line, can they rush the passer? Can they stop the run? Can they get off blocks with their hands? And are they disruptive? Josh Banks is all of those, and you got to watch out for him on third and four. Once again, Indiana without its All-American right guard, Dan Feeney, dealing with concussion symptoms as Lego throws, deflected, intercepted. Picked off on the run, it's Bates again. Jesse Bates inside the 15, he's got the pylon ahead. Touchdown, Jesse Bates, 55 yards for the score. Well, what a homecoming for the Indiana native Jesse Bates. The second time we've seen Lego throw high, the receiver can't catch it, can't bring it in, and who's there? Jesse Bates. Nobody's in, in pressure. The ball's high, and Bates capitalizes on it. And look at the return. The Savvyness waits for his blockers, does a little okey-doke, six points. Jesse Bates played his high school ball at Snyder High was the point guard on the high school hoops team. Son of Teresa having himself a day this afternoon with two picks and that one a pick six. Weaver's extra point try is knocked through. Wake Forest gets its first lead of the day. Richard Lego gulping it down. He'll get right back out there on BTN. Wake Forest has a 14-7 advantage. Jesse Bates was so pumped to be back in his home state. He has two INTs in the first half. Yeah, all off tip balls. Richard Lego overshot Timmy in early in the first quarter. And a great return by Bates. And then this time he finished the job as he overshot Westbrook on it. And you can see that Bates took it all the way back for six points. He's been the game changer and the difference for the Demon Deacons thus far. In his senior year of high school at Snyder High, we see Richard Lego's numbers on the day approaching 200 yards through the air, but senior year in high school for Bates, he had nine interceptions. Mike Weaver set to put it back into play. Squibs this one low, it's curling. Taken on a hop by Cole Guest. Gets a freight train down there at the 23. Yeah, Divine Reddy, one of the best backs in the Big Ten. They're focused on stopping him through the Demon Deacon defense. Staying on the ground, Wake Forest. So stout in that front seven. 
A three yard gain there brings up the second and seven. You don't see this much. You call this 21 personnel. Two backs, one tight end, two wide receivers. Interesting that they're coming to this personnel group here. Demon Deacon showing a blitz. Lego to throw here. And just leading his receiver out of bounds. Just a bit too strong for Donovan Hale. Well, Lego on the interceptions and on that throw overshot his receiver. He's got his man, he's open, he's beat. Leads him too far to the sideline. Leading him vertically down the sideline, that could have been, been a big play. Lego checking with everyone at the line of scrimmage. This is third and seven. Three wide receivers in the pattern. Hoosiers trailing for the first time today. Lego in traffic there was Ricky Jones, Brad Watson seeing the flag down, the penalty marker down on the turf. Yeah, and rather than interference, I think we're going to get Brad Watson on holding. Defense, number 25, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Big 10 officiating crew today, referee Don Willard. And, and they're calling that, look at the top of the screen. You'll see him with his right arm and then the left arm pulls back the receiver to him. When the ball gets there, he plays pretty clean because he doesn't wrap his arm around there that much, but it was the holding before that that they got him on. Lego working out of the pistol. See the penalty story top of the screen. Lego, deep ball downfield, and that is also intercepted. Brad Watson. And all of a sudden, Indiana, which came in with such great takeaway numbers among the national leaders, they have been mistake prone, and Lego has thrown three picks. Well, you got to protect the quarterback. They left in the tight end and the back, Majet, to protect, but Chris Calhoun, it looked like 51 and White comes into your screen and affects that throw. There's no way he was going to throw it right to the defensive player. It was Calhoun hits him right as he's throwing. And that affects the throw and leads to interception by Watson, who got his head around on the play and saw a ball coming right at him. Three interceptions for the Demon Deacon defense. That's how you win on the road. There, and the Demon Deacons get possession of the ball. A little less than three minutes separating us from Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. So three interceptions. Yeah. There was a fourth down stop that Grant Dawson stuck Tyler Natee. Right. And you'd have to say that that counts as a turnover as well in the red zone, where Mitchell Page was about to score. Holding call brings it back. They're forced to kick, and they get a block from Watson. Hats off to the Demon Deacon defense. Indiana's lucky only to be down the score. That would be the definition of inefficient so far for the Hoosiers. Wolford keeping it himself, crashing across the 25-yard line. Gain of six there. That's a critical third down for the Demon Deacons. You don't want to give two minutes of clock back to a Hoosier offense that can score in a hurry. Luckily, the Deacons are built for something like this, taking three downs to get a first down. Hoosier faithful, raising the decibel level a bit on third and three. Trying to get their defense off the field. That zone read to Colburn, flashing ahead. Matt Colburn near midfield, diving there. First down yardage, a gain of 23 for the 19-year-old sophomore. As you take a look at this, huge hole, and T-Gray Skills is there. Can't make the play in the hole. Colburn with a big game. They got a couple of timeouts left, Jay, and if you're Dave Clawson and you're trying to manage these last few seconds, what are you looking forward to? Trying to get the clock down to absolutely nothing and score with no time left is the ideal thing. Wolford going through his progressions, then running it inside the... Hoosier 40, the whistle was slow to come there. He didn't feel like he was ever brought down. As they're gonna mark it at the 38. A pickup of 12. Let's take a look if he was actually down. I don't know if his head hit or not. His knee definitely never hit. 
Tony Fields was there trying to bring the quarterback down. Wake Forest playing with tempo from the pocket. Pitch and catch there, complete to Cortez Lewis, who turned 20 back in July. He was number one for Wake and catches a season ago. And you see Dave Clawson encourages his team, pick up the tempo, about a minute 10 left on the clock. 70 seconds to go. Wolford will throw it. Looking down the middle, back of the end zone. Touchdown! Acrobatic grab, and somehow Chucky Wade managed to keep possession, crashing into the goalposts. What concentration and execution by the Demon Deacon offense. He takes the shot on man coverage. Wolford has his man, Chucky Wade, and he... That's going to be close. I think they'll take a look at that. They're going to review it. And it looks like, looks like his right foot was down at the moment he caught the ball. Chucky Wade had the school record for catches by a freshman last year. Does this count as a touchdown? Great protection for Wolford. Good ball. Throws it where only his receiver can get it. I think that's a touchdown. The foot does come up right after he catches the ball, but right there, the ball's in hand. Touchdown. Taking a shot from the goalpost. Good thing they have a pad on there. Oof. Mike Weaver is on for the extra point try. He's among the top six in Wake Forest history with respect to field goals. As they'll trot off to the dressing room on top 21 to seven, having scored the last three touchdowns in succession. And offense and defense, they really outplayed the Hoosiers all over the field, but the turnovers are the story. Indiana started with a bang, but Wake Forest definitely respond. After the break, Buffalo Wild Wings, the halftime report. It's coming up. Demon Deacons on the lead. At the end of the day, it appeared to be sweet music all day long for Indiana. They score on the first play from scrimmage. But after that, how did you see their reaction? Well, Indiana, this is a game of momentum. And up until the second drive, Indiana was in full swing, executing on all different levels. But the Demon Deacons responded and really took back the momentum in the first half. From a statistical standpoint, we see these numbers. The total offense favors IU. Absolutely, but you look at the turnovers. Three turnovers for IU, none for Wake Forest. It doesn't count the fourth down stop. It also doesn't count the block field goal. And you can see everything else is pretty pretty even on the time of possession. Obviously, the yards, Indiana's crushing Wake Forest, but it doesn't matter when there's turnovers like that. Indiana, known for its prolific offense, they'll have to rally from behind. Our quick and loans quarterback comparison, Jay, through 30 minutes, plays out like this. Well, Richard Lego crushing John Wolford in the yardage, but John Wolford's taking care of the football. Richard Lego has not. Now, not all those interceptions are all his fault. They did bounce off two receivers. He was hit on his third one when he threw the ball. He's got to take care of the football better. And on the flip side, Indiana being known, known for causing turnovers caused none in the first half. ETN football today, Joe Beninati, Jay Lehman with you from Memorial Stadium. Kevin Wilson's squad, have a peek at this. When it comes to win streaks, regular season against non-conference foes, the Hoosiers are usually in the win column. That's a pretty good company, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Ohio State, Michigan State, the Big Ten East representing. It has been five years since the last time an ACC team visited Bloomington. That was the University of Virginia back in 2011. Indiana's high-octane offense held to just seven first-half points. The last 21 points in succession belonging to Wake Forest. It's not many times, Joe, you'll see an offense almost garner 300 yards of total offense. You'd only have seven points to show. It's exactly what Kevin Wilson said. We have a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. They haven't been able to finish. Stephen Claude, the redshirt freshman, back deep for Wake Forest. They won the toss and deferred as Oaks sends it on its way. Claude, three yards deep, will take a knee. 
John Wolford going wall to wall today. No Kendall Hinton, who was very good against Indiana a season ago in what turned out to be a, a Hoosier victory. 31-24. Demon Deacons rallied in the fourth quarter, even recovered an onside kick in that game, but came up short. And they start the third quarter with a vengeance. It's Matt Colburn who's filling in for an ailing Cade Carney. Took a pretty good shot in the ribs from Marcelino Ball, who the Hoosiers feel may already be their most physical player on defense. It's saying something when you're only 17 years old. 17. And you're playing against 22, sometimes 23-year-olds in college. Football playing family. Brother Marcus is a defensive back in the NFL of Carolina. Swing it out to Tyler Bell, who's the understudy for Colburn today. They like Bell as a third down back. He knows the protections really well. No gain there. That's Wolford good. has been sacked, Jay, 72 times in his career. That's the most of any junior quarterback in the nation. And part of his big interception numbers is the way he's been sacked and pressured. It's hard to throw accurate balls when you're running for your life. In the coach's words, he's had his butt kicked. In the past, nobody opened bad protections, but that team's improved. There's a pass batted down off the edge. Richard fans working off the corner. Not a big guy, but Richard fans shows he's got a little elevation, and, he, and Wolford knew where to go with the ball. You want to throw the corner, you want to throw right at the corner blitz, but you just don't want to throw into the hands. Fant was number two in the nation in pass breakups last year. He arrived on campus weighing all of like 150 pounds. Defensive coordinator Tom Allen, though, says really good things about 16 in the red. It's third and 10. Which is that they checked and then Indiana's defense checked. Wolford feeling the blitz pressure, airs it out, and it's just over thrown over the shoulder of a Chucky Wayne as Wolford was made to pay for that pass. Bringing pressure on third and long forces the quarterback to get the ball out early, and he threw it a little bit before Chucky Wade really made his break. Wade, to his credit, adjusted on the ball, almost made a catch. Good call by Tom Allen on the defense. So Indiana gets the job done defensively in the first couple of minutes of the second half. And now they'll hope for Mitchell Page to flip the field here with a good punt return. Weaver hangs it in the air, and Page makes the fair catch. <laughs> Richard Lego calling the shots for the Hoosiers, who are playing today without All-American right guard Dan Feeney. Sustained a concussion a couple weeks ago. Starts to feel better, and only he knows how he truly feels, and they elect to keep him out today. Lego over the middle, connecting with Page. Stopped there by Brad Watson, who had a first half interception, a game of 16 for Page, who had 57 catches last year. He may get 60 today. He's a great receiver, and it's all about the play action. Makes the linebackers bite up. They throw it right behind the backers for the game. Working quickly. That extended long handoff, if you will, one more time for Page. Stopped after a gain of one. Jay and I, you and I, I think, both agree Redding has to be more involved in the second half. He has to be, but at this point, when you're taking away the run so much, it's difficult, and when you're only averaging, you know, one, two yards a carry, it's tough to justify giving the ball when Lego's almost thrown for 300 yards. Trailing by two touchdowns. Indiana going to the air. Lego. Holding that one, and it's incomplete. Ricky Jones is the intended target. There was a, a little bit of contact there. Yeah, Amari Henderson looked like he got there right as the ball was getting there. Good block by Reddy. Picks up the pressure from Watson. And again, the ball sails a little bit. I don't know if he lost that coming from the sun into the shadows, but it looks like he doesn't actually go up for the ball. Or he just got hit in the head by Amari Henderson's elbow. Just a little after 5.30 local time, shadows are starting to sweep across the field at Memorial Stadium. Third down and long for the Hoosiers. Lego from the gun. Over the middle into traffic, and it's intercepted. He threw it right into the waiting arms of Grant Dawson. 
Now, of all the picks, that was the most egregious. You have a linebacker, Grant Dawson, who is spot dropping. He's going to drop to a spot. He's going to drop to the hash mark. And he's going to wait because he believes the ball's coming there. And it hits him dead in the numbers. Watch. He's looking at the whole time. Grant Dawson's right there. It's a pick. Going the other way, Wake Forest. Wake Forest has the lead in Bloomington. Grant Dawson's telling everybody how it was done, and it's the result of a jumping jack named Paris Black. Yeah, 45 in white. Paris Black going against Jacob Bailey. Dan Feeney's replacement is going to get his left paw up there and just graze the football enough so it ends up right in the chest of Grant Dawson, who stepped in front of receiver Nick Westbrook. Seen a lot of tip balls today. That one led to a turnover as Dawson couldn't believe it came right to him. Dawson, the Winston-Salem native. Wolford with plenty of time. Put some heat on this one. Complete there to Chucky Wade. Those two hooked up for a first half touchdown. Here they get 11. Yeah, and Marcelino Ball has been matched up on Chucky Wade. And Marcelino's been great in the run game. Tough matchup for him in space against Chucky Wade, who's an explosive athlete. Two weeks ago, Ball was the Big Ten freshman of the week. Incredibly bright future for him. Wolford out of the gun. Looks like a little trouble there on the mesh point. Indiana is ready to eat it up after a gain of two. Urgency time for Indiana defense here. Could possibly go down three, sto three scores with a field goal or a touchdown. And you don't want to be down three scores in the third quarter to Wake Forest as the strength of their team is eating up clock with run plays. You see 91, Jacob Robinson on the end for the Hoosiers. Marcus Oliver, Nate Hoff, all of them barking, trying to get this Team D to come up with a critical stop now. Second and eight. Colburn in the backfield. Here comes the blitz off the edge. Colburn gets hit hard. Finished off there by T. Gray Scales. Help coming from Hoff after the gain of two. And Tom Allen's defense now is called on the carpet. We've seen Tom Allen bring a lot of pressure off the edges with Marcelina Ball. We saw Rashard Fant look for him to bring pressure now. Devin Wilson said, yep, yeah, he set a standard. Let's see how we do when we face adversity. This would be it. Wolford going deep to the end zone. And it'll fall incomplete. In a wrestling match there was uh, Cortez Lewis. <laughs> Yeah, you can see Crawford here kind of holding a little bit of the jersey. That could have been defensive holding very easily. Usually when you see the jersey pull, probably saved a touchdown. Crawford got away with some defensive holding, no question. And, and Lewis is upset about it. Mike Weaver on for a 46-yard attempt. Had a 42-yarder against Delaware last week in a win over the Blue Hens. Kick on the way. Plenty of leg, and it's true. <laughs> to the cheers of head coach Dave Clawson, Wake Forest improves its lead. <laughs> we'll have you back to Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. More BTN football carrying right along. For the moment, the ACC Demon Deacons with the upper hand. Demon Deacons and quarterback John Wolford enjoying their first ever visit to Bloomington. On top of the homestanding Hoosiers by a 24-7 count. Coach Clawson mentioning to us recently just how much this team revolves around its sophomore class, third-year sophomores who bring so much to the table. We have seen those players get involved and then some as this is a touchback. Lego to throw, wants the deep ball, has his man, wide open, sprinting there, it's Jones, just caught from behind. 65 yards from Lego to Ricky Jones, the leader and the veteran strikes for the Hoosier faithful. Yeah, they leave Brad Watson, the cornerback, all alone off the play action to fight against Ricky Jones, and Ricky Jones has about two steps on Watson, but unable to finish the play as you see Watson ripping the ball out. Now, here's the question, Joe. Can they get in the end zone and finish? 
a field goal is not what you're looking for when you're down 17. Approaching the five minute mark of the third quarter, plenty of time for Indiana. Lego. Corner on the fade there. Great catch, Westbrook. Touchdown, Hoosiers. So the total scoring drives, the ones they've scored touchdowns on, we've had a one-play drive for Indiana, and now a two-play drive. And both times, Westbrook was the benefactor of the TD. Those drives were light speed. Just a fade route, throws it over the top. Says Westbrook's got a couple inches on Amari Henderson, and that's how you draw it up. The exact spot you want to throw it. Talk about responding after a bad interception. Richard Legault. Henderson Legout. starting on the corner today over Deontay Austin. Henderson was nicked during camp. He's getting better and better as Oaks knocks the extra point through. Indiana trails by 10. Nick Westbrook, another huge game. This on the heels of an outstanding showing in a victory over Ball State two weeks ago. Yeah, quickly becoming the big play threat for Richard Lego. Even Claude back deep, awaiting this kickoff. End over end for Claude. And he'll settle in with a touchback. We are in Bloomington, Indiana, Memorial Stadium. Where Indiana has run roughshod lately over non-conference opponents in this stadium. This ball's aired out. Leaping grab made by Tabari Hines. <laughs> Talk about competing for a football. Making a 50-50 catch grab that could go either way. Tabari Hines, not a man of big stature, but goes up and elevates, catches the ball at its highest point over Marcelino Ball. Great play. Hines in motion. Colburn takes it here. Gets wrapped up quickly. A gain of three. Oliver chipping in on the tackle. A little bit more than four minutes with which to work in the third quarter. Well, if you're Indiana, you got to think turnover or three points. It'd be tough to give up a touchdown right now and go down three scores. You know who we haven't talked about today? Cam Saranen, the tight end very much, if at all. Quick hitter inside for Colbert. The first man didn't get it. Patrick Doherty, last man off the pile for the Hoosiers. Time continues to tick away. It's third and short now for the Demon Deacons. Slow developing run, run plays because pulling guards, pulling tight ends. You see Colborn just wait for his lineman and then pick a hole. Doherty resets on third and three. We haven't seen Wolford run the ball much, but on a third and short like this, you've got to be aware of quarterback run. Straight ahead. Colburn. Dutra getting involved. They're going to give him one. That's not enough for that first down yardage. Weaver's going to trot in off the sideline as Wolford checks out. It'll be a field goal opportunity for Coach Clawson and the Demon Deacons. 30-yard attempt for Mike Weaver. Made the first 10 field goals of his career when he started back in 2014. Bangs this one on the way, and it's good. Weaver, who had a three field goal game against Florida State last year, has a couple field goals this afternoon. Wake Forest lengthens the lead on the accuracy of Weaver. Look at this little sweetie enjoying a, a college football Saturday in Bloomington. 27-14 for Wake Forest. 30-yard field goal for Mike Weaver. Padding the lead for the Demon Deacons. Brookins back deep for Indiana. The Hoosiers started this game swiftly with a 75-yard lightning bolt. 
Wake Forest then had the next 21 points unanswered. A 27-14 advantage for the moment right now. Devontae Williams hits the scene, jumps on the accelerator, and gets it out to the 35-yard line. Good field position for the Hoosiers, and Devontae Williams showed another gear there. Explosive. Mike Majette in the backfield with the Richard Lego, 22-year-old from Plano, Texas. Dumps it off quickly for Majette, hurtling through the air to make the tackle there was Paris Black. Six-yard gain for Majette. He averaged right around five yards per carry last season. Lego will throw. Pumps it once, airs it out. Yes, sir! Ricky Jones down the sideline, inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Indiana. We talk about spacing. They did a Majette play prior to get on the opposite hash to make sure the safety couldn't get back over and help out with Ricky Jones. Good concentration there by Jones. That ball launched perfectly over Deontay Austin's head. Majette driving towards the goal line, lunging out with the football. He'll be marked down just shy after a gain of eight. On second and one, you've got to watch the tempo. And Majette probably with his best run of the day right here. Thought he was going to go and score here as he burst through, gets it down to the one. Offensive coordinator Kevin John says on offense, tempo overrides everything else we do. Wake Forest trying to get subs on the field and subs off. Lego up under center there. Wes Rogers who's waited his turn. Second and goal. The big man rumbles in. Tyler Nate. Touchdown Hoosiers. His first career touchdown for the 18-year-old freshman out of Texas. He's been battling injuries. He bullied his way in there. Similar play to what they ran on fourth and one where Grant Dawson stuck AT on that play, though. Almost went an untouched and bowled over his own offensive receiver. AT would be the definition of a bulldozer. Yes. Extra point try coming now from the reliable place kicker, Griffin Oaks. Boot on the way. No troubles there. And suddenly Indiana is within six. You can see here, just a, just a quarterback sweep of Natey at the quarterback position. Bowls over his owners, tight end Austin Doris, and pretty much goes in untouched. Oaks will put it back in play. Stephen Claude will be the return man. About five yards deep, will take a knee. First and 10 for Wake Forest. Wolfer over the middle, deep shot for Serenay. Deflected down and incomplete. Tony Fields was there running with a talented tight end who has catches in 27 straight games, but not today. Well, you mentioned Cam Serenay. He was their best offensive weapon last year, and he comes back to the football, but you see Fields turn around and almost looks like he hooked his left arm around the shoulder pad and kind of pulled down Serenay. No call. One thing we've seen Wake Forest do is mix it up on first down. They're not just running the ball. They've thrown a lot on first down. Serenay's been banged up. He's back to feeling close to 100%. More like himself. The play clock at five. Second and ten. Wolfer shoots this one to Serenay. He makes the catch. Oliver is there for the tackle. There is a penalty marker down. It was a gain of seven until we hear from referee Willard. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 42. A 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. It's a huge penalty. It's hard to see in live action, but it looked like Marcus Oliver actually made the tackle and maybe face mask, not ball. I think they got the wrong number. 
As you see right there, the left. I don't really see a face mask there unless his left hand is on the face mask. I, not sure if it was had the bottom of the face mask. It was certainly not egregious. Marcus definitely had a quizzical look to the sideline. Serenay adds to his consecutive games with a catch streak now up to 28. And as we see both teams huddling up, it's the end of three quarters here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Back for the final 15 after this. We are at the home of the Hoosiers. Three quarters complete in this chess match between Kevin Wilson and Dave Clawson between Indiana and Wake Forest. Wolford under pressure, he is sacked. There's a flag down. Off the uh, defensive end came Niall Sykes. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 35, 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the previous spot, automatic first down. Sykes, who had a sack against Florida International, gets another one here, but he gets penalized. Wow, that's a tough call. And we saw Marcus Oliver come through the middle, make him back up, and then Sykes definitely grabbed all of the face masks there and didn't need to. I know didn't do it on purpose, but that's a crucial penalty. 30 yards of yardage off a of face mask this drive. Big change. Just one minute into the fourth. Wolford checks to the sideline. Out of the gun. He'll keep it himself. Wolford fidgets inside the 30. Dives across the 25. Feels the last man there to touch him down. A gain of nine for Wolford, who rushed for 70 last week. Well-designed play, just a quarterback power play. He fakes, gives his lineman time to get around, and then fouls his lineman for nine yards. Coming right back to work with Tyler Bell. This is a Wake Forest team, Jay, that's the lowest scoring 3-0 team in the country. They put up 27 points today. Helped out by the turnovers that their defense has caused. Going quickly on third and short. Wolford gets the first down yardage himself. Ten, Wolford. Gotta like the savviness and moxie there of Wolford moxie right there. there. Huh? I mean, de decided not to just sneak it. Did a quick little do -si do sidestep and went up the field for four yards. Wake Forest's first three-game win streak since 2011. Trying to make it four in a row on enemy turf in Big Ten territory. From the pistol, it's Wolford. Colburn swiveled right into the waiting tackler there, Dean Ray Scales, no gain. Kevin Wilson was worried after the bye week. Silly penalties, undisciplined, kicking game mistakes. We've seen other kinds of mistakes thwart the Hoosiers today. Definitely the turnovers and penalties. As you get late in the fourth quarter, sometimes you don't want to want to run your quarterback, especially when your backup's out, but the chances of him getting hurt and being out for the game are less in the fourth quarter. So you can watch for the run. Running with Colburn. A short gain of one for the sophomore from South Carolina, former Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina. Wake Forest hailing from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They'll get back into the ACC matchups next week, squaring off in Raleigh with NC State. For the moment, they have their hands full with the Hoosiers. Third down and four. Look for pressure from the Hoosiers. Not necessarily to put on the quarterback, but a run-stopping pressure as well. Rushing five here. Wolford slips this one on a slant. A sliding catch made by Chucky Wade, who basically hit the turf and said, I have the first down. Give it to me. So the officials agree. Yes, they do. It'll be first and goal for the Demon Deacons. You take a look at this throw. Throws it low for the first down. And yes, Chucky Wade got his hands underneath that ball. Ball was thrown low at the sticks. 
Chucky Wade's made some big plays. Wolford ranked among the top 10 most passing categories at Wake Forest. Number 10 trying to lead his team to victory on the road today. Tucks it down. Runs around the edge and he'll be out of bounds. T. Gray exactly. Scales have been very involved on this sequence for Indiana. That's just what the doctor ordered for Indiana. A negative play and the quarterback runs out of bounds. Now, they didn't order T. Gray Scales to, get, Scales to get banged up a little bit as he hobbles off himself. Big series right here for Indiana's defense. Almost a five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Colburn is in the backfield with Wolford. Cortez Lewis to the near side of the formation. Wolford climbs up into the pocket. On his way to the end zone, Wolford's second TD of the day. An 11-yard jump. Moxie. John Wolford. Nobody's open. People are covered. Marcus Oliver is spying on him. He gets picked up on a block from his back. Colborn makes that play. Cuts Oliver in the open space. Gets Oliver on his hands and knees, and it's nothing but green turf and red end zone. Wolford over 60 yards on the ground. Lake Forest up by 12 and going for two. Five wideouts in this pattern. Got to look out for quarterback draw in this kind of set. Offer to throw on the fade to the back pylon. Incomplete. Looking for Cortez Lewis. Wolford took a shot. So the two-point conversion failed. It's 33-21 Wake Forest. As we saw Wolford back up. Nobody's open. Catches the block. Touchdown. Wake up 14 with 10 to play. John Wolford and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, a 33-21 leader. Their last regular season win over a non-ACC Power 5 team, Vanderbilt, in 2010. Wolford is keeping up his end of the bargain. Took care, taking care of the football, has completed throws when they needed, but X Factor has been the rushing yardage. You think Kendall Hinton would be the running quarterback? Wolford had some yards last week against Delaware, has some yards today, including that touchdown scamper. Devontae Williams going to bring it out from two yards deep. Williams looking for a seam, tracked down and brought down by Trevion Red. Less than 10 minutes to go in the fourth. And Richard Lego and the 2 0 Indiana Hoosiers. Look for a fourth quarter rally here. That ball was deflected, intended for Page. Prior to today's action, running into a buzz saw as Lego shoots this over the middle. A diving effort there, waiting for the ruling on the field. Ryan Janvian thinks he has the fifth interception of the day for the Demon Deacons, and he does. And, and that one is on Richard Lego. I mean, he threw it to the middle of the field to a spot, and there's really not much pressure on him. He can set his feet, just overshoots Ricky Jones. And let's see if Janvian, Janvian looks like he got his, gets his forearms underneath. It looks like a clean catch from that angle. They call him Mr. Steady, Ryan Janvian. He's been there so long, seen it all, done that. His first career interception was against Florida State way back in 2013. Most recent one comes today, and that will definitely put a hitch into Indiana's comeback efforts. Wake Forest has been opportunistic. They put 33 points on the board. And they are now trying to control this game into the winner's circle. Tyler Bell carries it along. Toppling over the pile is Jacob Robinson, who turns 20 next month. Quick timeout by Kevin Wilson. Those time is of the essence. Might as well use him now. Try to get the ball back quickly. Wolford leaping to take that high snap. 
as the Demon Deacons stay on the ground on second and long. It's a pickup of four. It'll bring up third and four. Matt Colburn has been the primary ball carrier for John Wolford. Cade Carney's been out with a knee injury. Can they muster a first down here on third and four? Out of the pistol. Colburn keeping the legs driving. Going to be marked a little bit shy of that first down yardage. Just shy of the line to gain, it appears, from here. Looks like Indiana has stopped the clock. Indiana, it's a full timeout. So exactly what you want. Try to get a three and out. We'll see, though. Uh, this is in an area where, where Dave Clawson could possibly go for it. They haven't had many uh, uh, stops in the end of this for no gain or negative yardage. So fourth and one, definitely a makeable down. Demon Deacons to punt. Mitchell Page, one of the players back deep for the Hoosiers on fourth and one. Snap was dropped. Weaver was not pressured. Scooting ahead, it's Richard Fant. Diving, bringing the football out to the 24-yard line, and that's where Indiana will take over. Indiana needs Lego to be accurate here. He's thrown five INTs, the most ever by an Indiana quarterback in a single game in school history. Lego underneath on the check down, big hit delivered there. Crushing blow to Jones as he was walloped by Markel Lee. Markel Lee was waiting for the shallow crossing route and just lit him up with a clean tackle. We'll give Indiana that throw all day at this point in the game. Lee covers a lot of ground. Lego hums this one out wide. Nice throw there. Chest high catch for Ricky Jones, a first down pickup for the Hoosiers. They're in the two minute drill, the deep comeback route right by the sideline is a favorite route because you're able to get out of bounds and still get chunks of yardage on the play. Jones, also a safe flip throw. Jones, Jay, a guy who's battled through some injuries, made some big plays today. As Lego checks to the sideline and whispers to all of his offensive linemen. And he has to be aware that the clock starts even when the ball out, it goes out of bounds. Divine Redding running with a purpose. Covered up there by Joshua Kone. It's a six-yard gain. Time continues to tick. Indiana has used all of its timeouts. Here at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana trails by 12. Divine Redding gets the first down yardage required for Indiana. A pickup of six. Got to be snapping this balls once the once the chains are set, go. And they do. They're listening to you. Lego to throw. Deep shot down the sideline. And he overthrows his target. That was Luke Timian running, sprinting. Had a 10-yard TD catch against Wall State two weeks ago. They brought out Ricky Jones for that last play. Gave him a breather. He's been the big play threat along with Westbrook. Ricky is the man to the wide side of the field, nearest the sideline. Lego out of the gun on second and 10. Around the edge where Wendell Dunn was waiting for the ball carrier. Dunn putting the stop on Devontae Williams, a loss of one. You've got to get going as the clock ticks. Lego barks out orders. We drip below five minutes to go in the fourth. Lego going through his progressions underneath Jones. Ricky Jones gets loose, powers his way inside the 30. Hoosiers are in business now. Same play they ran earlier. Mark Kelly had it sniffed out that time. Ricky Jones ran around him. I know he still got the first down. I know he plowed over the defender. You'd love for him to get out of bounds there. Good point. 440 left in the fourth. Lego with a throw, looping it ahead and just out of reach. Nick Westbrook, who already has a couple of touchdown catches today. And you see fresh receivers right there. Westbrook, look, he was laboring. 
he was tired didn't have the same kind of juice he had earlier in the game when you do plays back to back to back it's not just hard on the defense it's hard on these receivers they're running big routes and running back to line of scrimmage between each play the tight end is Austin Doris it's second and ten Redding in the backfield with the keep Divine Redding tracked down by Jesse Bates Stopped a couple yards shy of the first down. Richard Lego piloting this comeback. This effort for the Hoosiers. Divine Redding gets upset along the sidelines by Josh Okone. Okone, very good on special teams, making the stop there on Redding. So he does get out of bounds, but the clock stops until they reset the ball. And once the ref winds it, the clock's running in a critical play, fourth and down, fourth down, no timeouts remaining. I formation. Clyde Newton and Tyler Nate in the eye behind Lego. It's Nate. Thundering his way off tackle there. There's a flag down. He did pick up the first down yardage. And I think Josh Banks again forced a holding penalty. Offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. They nabbed the center, Wes Rogers, for that. And he's had a load in front of him, number 40, Josh Banks. He's the one that forced that holding call. He's been active all day. Watch the center in your picture. Just tackles the man. Three and a half to go and time ticking. Second fourth down conversion attempt on the day. Here comes the blitz. Lego shoots this one over the middle and it's batted down. Diving defensive work there for Brad Watson. Well, they bought pressure. They had Westbrook one-on-one -on -one with Watson, but just good coverage. It's about a 15-yard dig route that's 10 yards up the field and in. Protections there. Great technique by Watson. So he brings his left arm around. And what did Kevin Wilson think about? Coach Clawson says, I'm excited. Kevin Wilson was bumped. Defensive coordinator for the Demon Deacons, Mike Elko, said this will be a true measuring stick game for Wake Forest. They've measured up very well. Very well. This is a much improved team. We got a chance to sit down with Pat Fitzgerald last week, and he said Wake Forest is a much improved team as he was looking at the Duke-Wake Forest game for his prep. Colburn brought down at the 30, a pickup of three. Kevin Wilson does not have the ability to stop the clock anymore. Wake Forest still with two timeouts remaining. And one first down in this game is going to be locked away, barring any kind of turnover. Wake Forest's last regular season win against a non-ACC Power 5 team, Vanderbilt, in 2010. Two and a half away from a 4-0 mark are the Demon Deacons. Wolford from the pistol. Pike in motion. Put it in the belly of Colburn once more. Indiana with Michigan State, Ohio State, and Nebraska in succession to come. That's the heart of their schedule. Andre's Michigan State had a tough game today. Still a great program. There's no advertisement necessary for Ohio State and Urban Meyer. They look sharp against Oklahoma. And how about Nebraska last week against Oregon? Of course, they took on North. They take on Northwestern tonight. Has looked impressive. Less than two minutes to go. And a third and five facing the Demon Deacons. Pressure coming from the Hoosiers. Scooting out over the top there. Colburn wanting the first down spot. He picks up four. Closer and closer now to our State Farm post-game show.
Second, Howard and Stanley standing by to take you through the day in this college football Saturday. Joe Beninati and Jay Lehman winding things up from Memorial Stadium where the Demon Deacons will punt the ball back to the Hoosiers with a game clock very much in their favor. Richard Fant on one knee and to his side to make that catch. And that story at the top of the screen you just saw, the five turnovers, all interceptions, crippling Indiana's chances on this day. Lego looking downfield, checks it off to Divine Redding. And Redding wisely sprints out of bounds. Stopping the clock at 36 remaining after the pickup of 15. And hats off to Wake. They executed their game plan. They wanted to take Divine Redding out of the football game. They did just that. Make Richard Lego beat you with his arm. He was not able to do that. So many different facets for Wake Forest. Coach Clawson says they're playing at their highest level on the offensive line since he's arrived. We saw all facets work very well today, including special teams. When you're building a program, the last thing usually to come around is the offensive line, because you can't recruit ready-made offensive linemen to play in the ACC. You have to develop them. And the defensive line is the strength of this football team. We saw that today. The Hoosiers are going to have to bounce back against Michigan State, a team that'll be smarting. Lego fidgets loose, dumps it off again for Redding, who'll trot out of bounds just shy of the 50. Michigan State beat Indiana 52-26 a year ago in East Lansing. Just 29 ticks remaining in this one. Nebraska and Northwestern coming up in prime time on BTN as we put this one to a close. Redding once more sprints for the sideline, only picks up three. And if you're Kevin Wilson, who arguably one of the best offensive minds in all of football, if you look at the numbers that Indiana's had offensively, you got to go back to the drawing board a little bit when it comes to your quarterback play and protecting the football. 30-plus points in the last nine regular season games against non-conference teams. That doesn't appear to be happening today. Stuck on 21. Lego launching this one deep. And it's deflected. Jump ball caught. Touchdown. Donovan Hale. Not done yet are the Hoosiers. A deflection actually went the right way for the Hoosiers. We've seen three interceptions off of throws today that resulted in interceptions. Lego buys time, just heaves it up, and this is a dead to rights interception. Jesse Bates is just waiting for the pass, and Donovan Hill has it pop up. Catches an easy touchdown pass. The extra point try coming from Griffin Oaks. You familiar with the movie Bull Durham? I am. Epi Calvin, Nuke Lelouch, like he struck out 17 and he walked 17. Both were records. Richard Lego's having one of those kinds of days. 496 yards passing. And oh, by the way, the five INTs. Wow. All about the second hop on these onside kicks. Sometimes it's just luck of the draw when you talk to kickers and whether it's going to be a good kick or not. Hoosiers have to work quickly. First step, get the ball right here. Skips in there and look who makes the catch on the short hop. The Indiana native, Jesse Bates, who's had a pair of interceptions from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He shuts the door on the Hoosiers. There's a reason he's on the hand team. Never quite gets the hop he wants. One hops it, and before he can get a second hop, Bates gobbles it up. Wow, that 
that's an extensive handshake high five celebration. Did you ever have those? Yeah, me and you just did the fist pound usually, and me and, and just players, a simple you know, one. Yeah, we we didn't really get with the. Uh, all the little intricacies of the hand. I don't know if my fingers even work that way anymore, Joe. That one had about 25 taps. Wake Forest in the victory formation out of the ACC. The Demon Deacons are 4-0 as they will down Indiana by the final count of 33-28. to And if you're Coach Clawson, you've really got to love the way Wake Forest came on the road and played forced turnovers, played physical, got the victory. A day that Jesse Bates is sure to remember. Wake Forest prevails. The State Farm Post Game Show coming up after the break. An exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. For Jay, I'm Joe. For all the men and women in our crew, thanks so much for joining us. Wake Forest comes to Bloomington and races back home a winner.